everyone. Today is October 24th, 2020, and this is the Duel Assessment, your podcast for Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links. My name is Green Ranger. This week is a huge week in Duel Links because we have new box, new Roman character, and new cards from an event, I guess. <laughs> event that's not new, but still we have all these things in the same week. So we're going to try to go over those. Um, the new box, of course, is Voltage of Metal, the first XZ-themed mini box. Talk about all the URs and SRs and maybe some of the Rs today um, that stand out. Some of the XZs boxers, I guess. Duelist Road Clash at Crash Town. Two new cards from that event right now. And Axel Brody, first appearance of this guy. Uh, season 3 GX character. We're going to look at his two cards that he has so far. And don't forget about Doug Dimmaduel. Doug Dimmaduel has another XCs deck this week, and that is Lightsworn. Lightsworn XCs. Don't want to miss it. It's a great engine. Uh, a lot of support and popular archetype. See how he turns it into XCs. So that's for myself this week. Not a whole lot. I've just been losing a lot of ranked games. I've I've actually put in more games than I... Uh, had previously and trying to recapture the magic i'm playing car curry which is the tier one deck right now um i guess i have to play it better or build a better deck or get on a roll that the role just isn't there of course as i've mentioned before in past episodes i've been extremely out of whack um life-wise i've been out of whack and um you know it's dealing with the regular exhaustion that comes with being out of whack so part of this is the compromise of my ability to hit king of games uh motivation whatever you want to call it but i will recapture the magic someday all right we're only going to talk about one tournament today uh this week in the interest of time duel links meta weekly 147 first place well, just to talk about the breakdown i guess chris john's kind of came back uh, 9 out of the top 32 Chris Drons. Car Curry's have fallen. Only 2 in the top 32. First place, Psycho P, Draw Sense, Dark, Invoked, Magician Girl. So, out of all the Invoked decks that there were, there were Element Sabers, um, Roids, the uh, other one, and the Keith one. Magician Girls are interesting. They don't really need a field spell, so they tutor their cards very well with their own abilities. Chocolate Magician Girl, Berry Magician Girl, Apple Magician Girl. Apple's really just there for the fire, but the other ones, they help tutor the cards, so it's kind of like having a field spell. Pack in a lot of trap cards, Ballista Squad, Phoenix Chain, Floodgate, Karma Cut, Wolf D, and then Draw Sense Dark as the skill. That tutors out your Alistair when you need it, so... Um, Magician Girls, when they first showed up on the list, I thought they were a bit of a meme, but they could still take tournaments. And the Magician Girls themselves, they have a bit of survivability. Chocolate does the mirror wall thing. Barry does the flip to the fence. Summon from the deck, so very good um, for facilitating cards through the deck without having a need for a field spell. Second place, Cosmic Flare XL. Level duplication, Shirinui. Nothing new or special about this deck. Very um, old deck. Three Gazuki, two Solitaire, two Squire, two Spectral Sword, two Forbidden Lance, three Ballista Squad, two Phoenix Chain, three Floodgates, one Needle Ceiling. Really, we've seen a lot of the combo decks recently take over the meta, but this is just as old as it gets. No Spirit Master either. As the combo deck does rely on a lot of play on Spirit Master. This one has none. Top 4, Furman, Harpies, Hunting Ground, Black Wings. This deck seems to have more monsters than I recall. Um, there's 12 monsters in the deck and 8 spells and traps. Um, without Blackbird Close, they have squeezed out some of the spots for the monsters. But, you know, it's a combo deck. Um, Black Wings are a combo deck. Massive draw with Black Whirlwind. And they just beat you down to death. And Top 4, Snifus, Level Duplication, Crystrons. We see a shift here where this deck has completely moved off of Sea Stealth Attack. They would sometimes run the Mako Ocean spell. Uh, for Umi, this one just 
level duplication. So um, works out well for the um, synchro summoning aspect of the deck. Um, no C stuff, like I mentioned. Three copies of Psychic Wielder has pretty much made the difference uh, making this deck a synchro deck. Alright, so with some of the other tournaments combined, they have updated the tier list at Duel Links Meta. Karkuris are the sole tier 1 deck right now. Uh, I do believe that they are the sole tier 1 deck, though that might be fading with the um, this tournament. Tier 2, we have the demotion of combo Shirinui, the promotion of control Shirinui. So both Shirinui decks are neck and neck. In tier 2, Black Wings are still a strong play as well as Crystrons. Tier 3, we have the demotion of Ritual Beasts and Witchcrafters. We are going to continue to see a demotion of Witchcrafters, I believe. Uh, Destiny Heroes and also Invoked Roids have been promoted to Tier 3. That's a deck that we have to watch out for. And that is all. Alright. Let's get to some new cards. We have the Voltage of the Metal Mini Box. Uh, metal meaning machine archetypes in gearges and windups particularly. So these this mini box focuses on those two archetypes. Um, as a backstory, one of my first King of Game decks were gearges in the old style. So, you know, I had to buy some of this box to see. You know, I, I mean, I was probably going to overflow gems eventually. So I want to see where that old archetype that I loved so much could do with this XC's edition. Of course, being so, so early in the XC's meta, I mean, there's no XC's meta. Like, so early in the introduction of XC's in Duel Links, these archetypes aren't great. But we'll see where we can get with these cards. Um, you know, there's a disclaimer that I'm not an uh, XC's player at all in the TCG, so some of my evaluation of these cards may not be as good as other people's, but it's kind of like looking at XC's with fresh eyes and in the dumbed-down version that it is in Duel Links. So let's, let's begin with the URs and SRs, which are pretty much the same thing in a mini box. So the cover card is Gear Gigant X, rank 4, Machine XZs, 2 level 4, Machine Monsters, 2300 attack, 1500 defense. Once per turn, you can detach an XZ's material from this card. Add a level 4 or lower machine monster from your deck or graveyard to your hand. When this card leaves the field, you can target one level 3 or lower gear gem monster in your graveyard. Special summon that target. So this card isn't sexy at all. Two monsters to overlay into 2300, 1500, not that strong. But it is a value generator. You detach a material... Tutor machine from the deck or recycle from the graveyard. Pretty um pretty cool because you can work with any machine, so you're you're not constrained to playing gear just this could work with any machine deck. And when it's destroyed, banished or bounce, any effect that removes it from the field, resurrect a level three gear drift from the graveyard. So this is an interesting dilemma. It is an XC's monster that acquires two level 4 machine monsters when you're playing Gearges, those were the good ones. When you, when I hit King Games, I used all those good ones. Um, it's a Gearja... Wow, I'm, I'm forgetting the names. I have to look them up. Yeah, so Gearja Attacker, of course, is the, the one that destroys the back row. Gearja Accelerator is the special summon one. That one wasn't great. Uh, Gearja Augur? No. Gearja Armor came out this set. What's the one that's underwater? Gearja Arsenal was played, for sure. Is it Gearja Augur? No, it wasn't that either. It was the one, the red one, that was underwater. This is annoying. Gearja Accelerator? No, I just saw that one. Gearja Anchor. Yeah. Gearja Anchor. Um, played a lot. So they have all those level 4 monsters. And that is what you need for this. But the resurrection ability is on a level 3 monster. And all those cards were Gear Gianos, which have been reprinted into this box. That's a good thing they did because 
um, the Giorgianos are all here and they fit with these Xyz monsters. So you're going to resurrect one of those cards. There's just value in this card. You could draw two machines with this card and get a third when it's removed. So just the value generator. Despite this, it's slow though. When it comes onto the board, your opponent can disrupt it with Floodgate or Paleozo Canadia. And then you don't really get anything out of it. You don't get those two free um, machine cards back. So slow, but value. Alright, next card is another XZ's Levy Air the Sea Dragon, a Wind Rank 3 Aqua, two level 3 monsters, 1800, 1600, once per turn. You can detach one material from this card, then target one banished level 4 lower monster, special summon that target to your field. Not that good, I think. Um, it's only useful if you're running a deck that does banish stuff, and thankfully we have Karma Cut. So Karma Cut can banish anything, and you could basically just steal your opponent's monsters. So kind of what we're going for here. Another deck like Crystrons perhaps could use this. Crystrons, of course, have a lot of rank three plays. I mean, level three monsters for this rank three XZ summon. So they're another pos. This could fit into Crystrons because their Quadrant Gandrix is banishing three things anyways. So that's what it is. You're basically trying to banish stuff and steal it. And that's a little gimmicky. It's kind of like a two card combo. And of course, uh, Karma Cut costs a little bit more. The setup for Quadrant Gandrix is something. So, yeah, I don't really see much appeal in this card. Next one is Wind Up Shark, level 4 Waterfish, 1500 1300. When a Wind Up Monster is normal or special summon to your side of the field, you can special summon this card from your hand. Once per turn, you can activate one of these effects, increase this level's. This card's level by one. Until the end phase, reduce this card's level by one until the end phase. Very good card. Um, perfect XZ's material for the wind-up archetype. And maybe even more things. Just a good XZ's play. It's level four, so it covers five and three. So you can make a rank three, four, or five. Um, depending on what else you have on the board. So, um, you know, whatever is normal summoned or special summoned, then you do it to match. So... Pretty good card. And just a general flexible XZ's card. This is the type of card that you would like to like buy through um, to set up like a future XZ's play. It's a very flexible card as XZ's material. Move on to the SRs. Wind up Zen Mains. Level 3 fire. Rank 3 fire. Machine 2 level 3 monsters. 1500-2100. If this face-up card on the field would be destroyed, you can detach one Xyz material from this card instead. Once per turn during the end phase, if this effect was used this turn, target one card on the field and destroy it. Very good control monster. It starts off with two lives. Basically, two extra lives. That's three lives. And it could destroy up to two cards. You know, basically, depending on what your opponent has on the board. So, it is... You know, like targeting ability is destroy ability, but those are still abilities. And it activates during the end phase. So you could basically hit back row if you want. Your opponent sets back row, then you can't use it. Or you could use it to destroy their monster, which is a generally a nice thing to do. Um Yeah, this is a this is a card you would like to put extra XC's materials on. Last box we got some helper cards, general XC support cards that would do such things. This is a type of control card that would fit really well with that and just destroy a lot of cards depending on how many XZ's materials you have. I, I like this card. Next one is number 50, Black Ship of Corn. It's a dark plant for some reason. Uh, two level 4 monsters, 2100, 1500 defense. Once per turn, you can detach an XZ's material from this card. Then target one face of the monster your opponent controls with attack less than or equal to this card's attack. Send it to the graveyard. If you do inflict 500 burn to your opponent, this card can't attack the turn you activate this effect. Very solid rank 4 XZ's generic 2 level 4 monsters of any type. And it benefits a lot from buffs. Concentrating Current comes to mind, so it becomes 3600 attack. You can pretty much remove anything from the board when you have that going. There's some other cards that do buff plants that aren't used, like Overdoom Line, I think it's a 1000 attack, so it's 3100. That's not bad either. 
Um, and then this ability. So it has two materials on it. Target a face of monster with attack less than or equal to. Send it to the graveyard. You target, but the benefit is send it to the graveyard. So it gets around the various uh, protections against destruction. So um, there you go. And you inflict 500 burn. So it's an extra ability. It's it's pretty much free. It's gravy. The normal TCG card of Black Shop of Corn is a thousand. So this card got nerfed a little bit, but that's really just an extra ability. I'm using it to remove monsters that are pesky on your opponent's side of the board. Pretty good. I expect this to see a lot of play as an XC's monster just leading the way. Of course, it'll get phased out eventually, but it's really good for anything that could buff it as well. It's probably like a core XC's monster for decks that buff each other. Alright. Next one is Diamond Dire Wolf, rank 4. Earth, 2 level 4 monsters of any type. It's a beast, 2,200. Once per turn, you can detach. So this card, once per turn, you can detach one XZ's material from this card. Then target one beast, beast warrior, or winged beast you control and one other card on the field and destroy them. This card's interesting. It could combo with two very annoying cards, Sacred Phoenix of Nephis and Fire King Avatar High, High Avatar Grunix. So it could fit for those and it's a level 4 monster which works for those um, Fire King Avatar guys. That's something to think about, but uh, you, you probably want some benefit from destroying your own beast, uh, beast warrior, or winged type. So you could kind of do like a two for one, destroy, destroy, and then get another bonus ability. It's pretty much what you would want here. Um, you could do. There's something with the green baboon. The green baboon can cheat from the hand. That's a really old card. Uh, it's another play. This card reminds me of. Um, I'm just blanking on names cards now there's like a beast warrior 2000 attack synchro summon where you you synchro summon him and then you could bounce two cards back this does the same thing sort of where you destroy uh one on each side all right next card is heraldic beast leo level four earth beast 2000 1000 during the end phase of the turn this card was normal summon destroy this when this card is sent to the graveyard add a heraldic beast monster from your deck to your hand Except for Leo, you can use this effect once per turn. So like a lot of level 4 beat sticks, this comes without a downside. And here it gets destroyed. It's not really a downside for this archetype though, as we'll learn. Um, you do lose that body on the board. But you get to add a card to your hand, so that's something. And you, the archetype basically works for filling out their graveyard. It's a really weird archetype. I don't really know what's going on, but... That's really what it does, but you do lose that board presence. You lose something to prevent you from getting attacked directly. And it doesn't seem like a turn one play to me, but I don't know. It's it it is an SR for this archetype for a reason. The only SR for this archetype. Um SR monster, I mean, but yeah. Losing that monster on the board is pretty important, but I think they have other they're more of an XC's archetype, they're focused on other things. Wind up magician, fire, level four spellcaster, six hundred attack, eighteen hundred defense. If the effect of a wind up monster is activated, except wind up magician, you can special summon one level four or lower wind up monster from your deck in face up defense. This effect can only be used once while this card is face up on the field. Very good card. Um, this Xyz archetype gets more and more support, and you could cheat out monsters from the deck. So this. Cheating on a monster from the deck is pretty much the best thing because if you're cheating from the hand, you lose card advantage. Uh, resources you can use in the future. When cheating out from the deck, you're thinning your deck to get other cards you would like. And you're not losing card advantage. So, pretty core um, Xyz material monster. Next one is a reprint card. Fairy Tale Rella, level 4, light spellcaster, 1850, 1000. Neither player can target monsters on the field with spell cards or effects except for this one. Once per turn, you can discard one spell, equip spell from your hand. Equip one equip spell from your hand deck or graveyard to this card, but that return that equip spell to the hand during the end phase. This card never saw any play. Uh, when it is in the selection box, that's all I have to say. 
Next card is an old one, but a good one. Marauding Captain, level 3 Earth Warrior, 1200-400. Your opponent cannot target warrior monsters for attacks except for this one. When this card is normal summoned, you can special summon one level 4 or lower monster from your hand. This sets up a lot of plays. You can get a monster out of the hand. Do XZ summon, synchro summon, even set up a silent swordsman play. So, a lot this card can do. Of course, you're taking it out of the hand, which makes this, um, not, you know, prevents it from being OP. But, this is flexible. You can make like a combo XZ synchro deck, and this is part of it. You have to play Warriors, though, so that's the caveat, I guess. Next up is Charged Up Heraldry, Normal Spell. Tribute 1 Monster, Special Summon 2 Heraldic Beasts from your deck in defense. Also, you can't Special Summon Monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn after this card resolves except for Psychics or Machine Monsters. You can only activate 1 per turn. Great play. You could set up an XZ Summon with Heraldic Beasts. Um, you're confined to doing it with the Psychics or the Machines. So you could do it... Um, this archetype only uses psychic monsters, so that's interesting. That fits with the first condition, and then there's various machines in this in this also, so maybe it fits for them as well. Um, yeah, that's all I have to say about it. It's conditional. You have to tribute a monster, though, but that's fine. And the monster doesn't have to be face-up, and it could be any monster, so it's pretty... It's good for allowing the monster to get flipped face-down, which is sometimes a detriment. Requiring a face of monster is sometimes a detriment. Next up is Gear to Gear Trap Card Special Summon two Gear Giano monsters from your deck and increase their levels by one. You can only activate one Gear to Gear per turn. So the Gear Gear Giano monsters were all never meta before. Like I said, the good Gear to monsters were all the level four monsters. You didn't really play any of these level threes. So now this trap gives them life. Uh, one card XZ summon. Very good. You could get those two guys out of the board, increase their levels by one, and you can make the gear Gigant X, or you can make a number of different you know XZs plays. So you could basically toolbox. You could turn well the gears are gear, so it makes sense. You could make a Gearja toolbox deck. Black Ship of Corn. Diamond Darwolf doesn't really fit, but you get you get what I mean, right? There's Turning them into level 4 monsters, number 18 to level 4. Uh, yeah, you get what I mean. You could, you could do a lot of stuff with this card. The issue is whether or not the old gear, the good gear to monsters will be played. So they might just be gear Giano decks. I don't know. And this is a trap card, so it has to survive like a cosmic cycle, cyclone that's set on your opponent's turn. I'm not sure where the gear just will be. Like they might just be straight up a gear Giano deck. Finally, XZ's Veil. Continuous trap. Face up XZ's monsters with XZ's material cannot be targeted by card effects. This is just general XZ's protection. So face up XZ's monsters with materials cannot be targeted by effects. Pretty good protection. Um being Able to dodge a lot of stuff like Archfiend's Call does is really good. Um, these cards are typically better when they're built in with an archetype, but this is a decent generic card to get. I'm not sure if it will see a ton of play. It will continue to see less and less play, I think. But right now for this the XZ's monsters we have, it could get over a bunch of decks. Alright, so there's a bunch of other archetypes in this box. Uh, Heraldic Beasts. Gearjas. Um It's mostly those two. There's not much else here. All the the wind ups too, but let's talk about the XC's monsters that we get that are R's and N's. Some of them are pretty interesting. So number eighteen Heraldry Heraldry Patriarch, level four, light rank four, light psychic, two level four monsters, twenty two hundred attack and twenty two hundred defense. Once per chain during either player's turn, if two or more monsters with the same name are on the field, you can detach one XZ's material from this card, choose one monster among those with the same name, destroy all other monsters with that name. While this card remains face up on the field, your opponent cannot summon monsters with the same name as any of the monsters chosen for this card's effect. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can send two Heraldic Beast monsters from your deck to your graveyard. 
a lot going on here. But it's a very niche monster that prevents monsters with the same name from being played. This doesn't sound like it happens a ton, but there's a number of monsters with substitute names. And I'm talking about Dark Magician and Magician of Dark Malusion being called Dark Magician. So that's one hit. I'm sure there are plenty of other examples in Duel Links, but it's a tech card against archetypes that use cards with the same name. It's a tech XZ's monster. And then you could recycle two Heraldic Beasts, I guess. Um, very situational card. It does work against Dark Magician, which I'm all for. All right, uh, this wind-up card, wind-up Arsenal Zen Mayo, love uh, rank four machine, wind two level four five monsters, twenty six hundred to heck nineteen hundred defense. Once per turn, detach an XZ's monster, a material from this card, target two set cards on the field, destroy them. Pretty good, solid control card. Works against any set card, monster, or back row. And you could destroy up to four. It does suffer from a speed problem, though. You could no effect right away, so you could get flipped face down. That's the downside, but decent attack, two with 2,600, of course, to cost two level five monsters. Next card is Wind Up Carrier Zen Mighty, level... Wow, is she messing up? Rank three, water... Machine, two level three monsters, 1500, 1500. Once per turn, detach and exit these material from this card. Special summon a wind up monster from your hand or deck. When a face up wind up monster on the field is destroyed and sent to your graveyard, you can detach and exit these material from this card, target that monster, return it to the hand. So, like this thing is, it's an aircraft carrier. It facilitates monsters from the hand, deck, and graveyard. A lot of things going on here. I'm not sure if this card is. It seems too slow. Like it seems like it makes a lot of things go on, but windups are pretty um, complex archetype. For if if this is going on, if you need a card like this, hopefully you don't need a card like this. But the card, the deck might just suffer from card draw, and they need a card like this. You're kind of like using an Xyz monster to facilitate stuff when it's better for a monster to do that. But we'll see if this winds up seeing play. Um, let's see what else. A lot to go over here. Um, three other XZ's monsters in the end zone. Here's another Gearja monster. Alright. Gearja Gear Gigant XG. Rank 3 Earth Machine. 3 level 3 monsters. 2500 attack, 1300 defense. During either player's battle step while an attack involving your machine monster is occurring... You can detach an XZ's material from this card, negate the effects of all face-up cards your opponent controls. Also, your opponent cannot activate cards or effects. These effects last until the end of the damage step. When this card, when this face-up card leaves the field, you can target one other Gearja card in your graveyard. Add that target to your hand. This is the boss monster on a on an end rarity card. Um, negates all face-up cards your opponent controls. So they could have um, Necrofalli gets negated. Your opponent can't activate their back row, kind of like the ancient gear effect. Um, this was pretty solid, and it costs a lot three level three monsters, so you can make it with Gearja Change. Gearja Change is a quick play. Target two or more Gearjiano monsters with different names in your graveyard. Special summon them immediately after this card resolves. XC summon one XC monster using all the summoned monsters, and no other materials. So you can kind of use that card. Um, yeah, all the Giorgianos are level 3, so you're not going to be playing the good Giorgios. You'll be playing the Giorgianos to make this guy. So there's a lot going on. It's a pretty strong monster. Next one is a special one. Number 69. Heraldry Crest. Level, rank 4, Psychic. 3 level 4 monsters, 2600 attack, 1400 defense. When this is special summon, negate the effects of all their face-up Xyz monsters on the field. You can target one other face-up XZ's monster on the field until the end phase. This card's name and original effect become the same as that monster. This is kind of like an XZ's version of Relinquished. When there, if, if the XZ's meta ever, ever arrives, you could just steal that monster, steal its effects. Pretty cool. Cool, yeah, but 
We have to wait for the Xyz meta to come first. And here's another card from that archetype. Number 8, Heraldric King Genome Heritage. Genome Heritage, I can't read today. Rank 4, Psychic. 2 level 4 Heraldic Beasts. 2400 to 1800. Once per turn, you can target a face of Xyz monster your point controls. This card's name and original attack become that monster's name and attack. And this card's effect becomes that monster's original effect. So you're copying things again. Then that monster's attack becomes zero and its effects are negated. These changes last until the end phase. This is a more aggro version of the number 69. Because you could do a OTK Crimson Fox, Luna Light Crimson Fox, where you turn them to zero and hit them with two things and it's over. You're stealing their effects too. So this is another XZ's meta eater. These cards could come in handy down the line when, when Xyz are meta. They will be meta suit someday. I don't know when. But this card can straight up steal stuff. So yeah, those are the URs and SRs and some of the other Xyz monsters in this mini box. Overall, the box doesn't look great. But I think there could be some cards down the line to help Xyz monsters down the line in Duel Links. So it might be worth buying then. Um, oh might go over some of the R's next time when the archetypes are fully fleshed out, but we'll see. Alright, Duelist Road Clash at Crash Town. When this when this came out the first time, it was one of my favorite events. It's a very easy to play event. Helps you learn the storyline. We got to unlock Kaylin Kessler last time. A lot of cool things going on here. Um, now it's the second time that's going on. And yeah, enjoy it. It's a nice event. Two new cards. Luna the Dark Spirit, level 4, Dark Fiend, 1600, 1200. Cannot be normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand, but banishing one Dark Monster from your graveyard. Once per turn during your standby phase, inflict 500 damage to your, your opponent. Is it 500 or 250? I have a feeling Dolan's meta did not uh, nerf the... Ability. Be 250. Yeah, that's a problem. When you're reading things off Duel Link's meta, they didn't um, they didn't cut the burn damage in half. So, really what happens, you're inflicting 250 to your opponent. So there's a lot of burn cards nerfed. This is the same thing. So you're doing a minimal burn during your standby phase. Free summon, though, with graveyard disposal. If you banish something in your graveyard, that fits with what the Light Sworns are doing. So they toss... Some monsters away, and then you could banish it. Get a free summon, so it's useful for being a free summon. Uh, she's not that good for the burn ability, and she's also level four, so it works for some Xyz plays. Um, minimal minimal burns, not much of an effect. There's probably better light and dark monsters to use for this graveyard special summon, unfortunately. But maybe she'll see some play. It's only one monster you're costing, and it's another body on the board for. Your next play. Next card is Infernity Reflector. Normal Trap. Um, activate only by discarding all the cards in your hand. When an Infernity monster you control is destroyed by battle and sent to the graveyard, select and special summon that monster from the graveyard and inflict 500 damage to your opponent. Is it 500? Or is it 250? 500. There's an inconsistency with Duel Link's meta. Some things are right, some things are wrong. But Infernity Reflector in Duel Links does inflict 500. Okay. So more burn nerf, but when it was 1,000, it would have been too strong. Um, it's just the extra effect here. This is more useful for Infernity. When you're playing behind, monsters destroyed, discard all your cards, and you can resurrect your Infernity Arch Fiend. So that helps set up your play. Given that Infernities do stall a little bit, they stall for a few turns, and then they set up their OTK, this is very useful. I think this will make Infernities more consistent in getting their plays off. So, yeah, this totally fits in with the deck. I haven't seen a more useful card for an archetype released in a bit. Of course, Infernities are a bit underpowered. They're heavy... On that OTK, any back row pretty much ends them. So you, you, when you're playing against Infernities, they have this new tool. 
Uh, they're they're stronger. They're gonna mess you up. Make sure you have some back row against your opponent. All right. So they also have a new Kalen Kessler skill, but that has not been released yet. Now let's talk about an update to Yu-Gi-Oh GX, which we haven't seen in a while. I think Yu-Gi-Oh GX has been neglected for quite a bit. And that's Axel Brody. We finally get Axel Brody. This is a character that a lot of people have wanted for a bit. Um, I did watch some Season 3 uh, Yu-Gi-Oh GX because I thought it was pretty... It was like the dark season where Jaden kind of loses it. But they do all this stuff where he's like... Uh, Axel's like a mysterious bad guy at first because he follows Viper, who's Viper's a bad guy. Then he becomes a good guy. Becomes part of the Season 3 gang. And then they do all stuff in the dark world. Him and uh, Crocodile Jim. They really step it up when when um, the other characters are kind of messed up or dead or locked up. So Axel really steps up. That's That makes him a fan favorite. And one of the things that works against him is because they released all of his cards really early on. I think Blaze Acceleration was the box when they did all the volcanic stuff. So all his cards got released early. I'm not sure what happens when we finally get him as a character, but right now, a lot of his cards are released. You're going to have to give him some random fire monsters, which appears to be the deal. But anyways, right now, he's a roaming duelist. Two new cards. First one's Inferno, level 4 Pyro, 1100 attack, 1900 defense. Cannot be sum normal summoned or set. Must be special summoned from your hand by banishing a fire monster from your graveyard. If this card destroys an opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, inflict 750 da damage to your opponent. This can inflict some big burn. The TCG card obviously was 1500, so that would have been pretty good. But you're asking an 1100 attack monster to hit something. Do 750, that's a pretty good deal. Uh, most of the time, this won't destroy anything, but you never know. It could hit some things. Now, the main appeal of this card is banishing a fire monster from a graveyard. So, like Luna the Dark Spirit, it's a free play. It's mostly free play. But there is a combo of Shirinui, and Shirinui get benefits from banishing themselves from the graveyards. So, it's a good combo of Spirit Master. Make a play and destroy stuff. The problem is Shirinui is such a tight deck. They work well the way they are right now with Gozuki setting up a play. This would make this would make it a little more gimmicky. Having an Inferno in there or just being a dead hand sometimes. And Gozuki's an Earth monster, for example, so you don't really want to mess with a winning formula the way that Shirinui are. But maybe this could be a way for you to banish stuff. Banish the Squire and get a play going. I don't know. This could come into play with Shirinui. I don't expect it to because it is a little clunky. Can't normal summon it. You have to have a lot of fire monsters. So I could see it being a little clunky. Not fitting in with a winning formula we have right now. But never say never, I think. And also we get an SR card. Volcanic Slicer. Level 4. Pyro, 1800, 1200. Once per turn, you can inflict 250 damage to your opponent. If you activate this effect, this card cannot attack during this turn. You know, this is not a very good card, but it's a level 4, 1800, which would have been very good back then. Um, the problem with this card is the 250 burn is probably less than what this card is attacking for. It's an 1800 attacker. It's not nothing. So most of the time, you're going to be doing more damage with this guy. The benefit of destroying a face down... Set Moxer is probably better than inflicting 250. So, you know, with these cards, burn cards getting nerfed, I'm, I'm thankful they burned all, they they burned the burn cards, but uh, it makes it look over underwhelming. This 250, it's like there's no reason to play it. It does add up though. I mean, chain reaction. If you're playing against a chain reaction deck. It is something. Points do add up doesn't seem like much at all it makes the inferno hitting for 750 the luna the dark spirit hitting for 500 those are those are okay but hitting for 250 just seems a bit weak all right new card trader card everyone expected this to come from axel it did not 
It's an end rarity card called Flame Wall, so you can just pretty much get it for free. While a Pyro Monster is in your graveyard, you take no effect damage from your opponent's card effects. So Burn's been nerfed. We have an anti-burn card here. Um, sure. You're never going to play this card. Burn becomes meta, sure. You're going to be running a Pyro too, so... You might be playing Burn. Like, everyone's playing Burn, so you play Flame Wall or something. I don't know what's going on, but I do see Flame Swordsman in the artwork, so that's a plus. Yeah, this card sucks. Um, yeah. Alright, so Doug Dimidul is back with his casual deck of the week, and this week we have Light Sworn XZs. Um, everyone knows Light Sworn has kind of been an engine for quite a bit of time. This is a pure Light Sworn deck, 30 cards, a um, whole mix of cards in here. We've seen through the Light Sworn history, but in addition to some of the synchro plays in the extra deck, we have some XZs. So if you're interested in starting out an XZs deck, again, here is a deck you may have all the cards too. You may have some of the cards, but you know there's no real way to build Light Sworn. You just need a few core cards, and then you'll probably have some of the other ones. But here is Doug Dimidul with his Light Sworn XZs deck. Hey there, this is Doug Dimidul with Doug's Casual Deck of the Week. So, this week with all of the uh, Exceed summoning and all that fun stuff, I thought I'd go back to one of the archetypes that were very frustrating, annoying, and have been potentially nerfed to oblivion, but it's still not that bad. That's right. I'm talking about Light Swarns. Oh, yeah. Everybody's favorite thing. But this is this is just a 30-card mishmash. I'm not using any fancy skill or anything, but it's been unusually consistent for a 30-card deck. Uh, and also, with the new use of some level 4 uh, Xyz monsters to summon from the extra deck, this thing is just not so bad. So, uh, basically, without further ado, let me get into it. Really, the driver is those... Uh, uh, those spell and trap cards. I know we just had Charge of the Light Brigade uh, semi-limited to two cards uh, in the deck, so you really can't use any of those other staples. Still, it's a really good one. You want to run your, you know, both copies of it. Send the top three cards of your deck to the graveyard. Add one level four or lower Light Sworn monster from your deck to your hand. Really good mill card. Really good way to send monsters to the to the graveyard. And then your three copies of Solar Recharge. This is what you really need to have. You discard one Light Sworn monster, draw two cards, then send the top two cards of your deck to the graveyard. Now, there's a few stuff that few things that I think will end up in the graveyard, and I only run one copy of it, but uh, that includes Light Sworn Saber, where you can equip only to a Light Sworn monster and increase its attack by 700. But if this card is sent from your deck to the graveyard, you could target one Light Sworn on the field and attach it from your graveyard to that monster. Uh, and then for good measure, if you open with this card, that's fantastic, but Glorious Illusion... As you could just activate this card by targeting one Light Sworn monster in your graveyard and special that target in face-up attack position. Then you can send the top two cards of your deck to your graveyard during each of your end phases. It's a must-do. So uh, it just helps you, you know, especially with a 30-card deck, to really run through it. Now, as for the monsters, you could just use really any Light Sworns that you have in there. But the one thing that I require in, the, in any Light Sworn deck is your three copies of Lumina Light Sworn Summoner and then your three copies copies of Raid in Hand of the Light Sworn, your level 4 uh, you know, uh, tuner monster and your level 3 spellcaster. So you can start having some shenanigans in the extra deck. Things like your Michael the Arc Light Sworn, your Black Rose Dragon, your uh, Samurai Destroyer. So there's, you know, there's some good level 7 synchros, of course, that, um, uh, 
you know, with the one spellcaster, um, Fortune Lady, every, I believe it was. Uh, yeah, you could just have, have a blast with the extra deck. But because there's quite a few warrior type light sworn monsters, you could use your Zubaba General, which requires two level four monsters. And you could detach one XE's material from this card, equip one warrior type monster from your hand to this card, and then it gains attack by that amount. So I'm thinking warriors such as Raiden, you got, um, I guess you got a few other warriors that are, uh, in this deck. I'm trying to figure out which, which one some of the other warriors are. Um, Beast Warrior, Beast Warrior. Eh, you know, either way, Raiden, that's pretty good. And then, of course, the new uh, Aaron Lightsworn Monk is also a warrior. So that's a 1600 attack boost and a 1700 attack boost. So, uh, yeah, you could get a nice little nice little jump in, um, you know, in, in some attack for that, uh, that XE's monster. So, but then, because without... You know, you can't build a Light Sworn deck without this monster. you got to have your three copies of Judgment Dragon if you got them. Uh, all it requires is four different Light Sworns in your graveyard, uh, but cannot be special summoned any other way. Then you could pull up the board by paying a 1,000 life points. It is awesome. So with that being said, I got my one copy of Celestia, my one copy of Lila, one copy of Lumina Twilight Sworn Shaman, one copy of Aaron the Monk, you got one copy of Raiko, the, uh, the the one that banishes, that little dog that banishes stuff. Then you got Raiko Light Sworn Hunter, the one that doesn't banish and just pops a card on the field. Uh, your one uh, Gragoneth Light Sworn Dragon. This card can be a, a sneaky good card near near later in a duel when you got all these different light swarms in your graveyard and you could either summon this uh, using your trap card to get it back out on the field or surprise everybody with a tribute summon and then boom you have a huge huge attack monster uh you know then you also got felis you got uh genis light sworn mender you got your wolf light sworn beast when it's milled it can special summon itself onto the field that's how i want to get into some of those level four uh you know uh xe summon plus plays really really good card uh you know you could also have your minerva light sworn maiden so you could have a level six synchro into your brionic i mean i don't know the the options are endless we have so many light sworn monsters i would like to run one of each if possible so that way we got a whole bunch of different light sworns with different names and it makes it so easy to special summon our judgment dragon and uh i mean yeah i i the the deck is really fun in a casual setting. Obviously, there's a lot of ways to stop this deck. There's a lot of ways you could get in trouble with this deck if you're playing on the ladder, if you're playing competitively. But really, it's just kind of a nice template where you know maybe use Life Point Boost Alpha or something if you're playing in a uh, PVE type setup. The deck is pretty good. So anyway, give a give a Light Sworn deck a shot. You know, it's um. With with these XEs coming out, you know, level 3, level 4 XEs plays, makes it real easy and, and it spices up the extra deck rather than just having that level 7 synchro toolbox that we're so used to. We could, we could make things a little spicier. So, anyway, that's it for this week's casual deck of the week. I will see you next time. Take care. All right, thanks a lot, Doug. You can check out Doug's Casual Deck of the Week every week on this podcast. Check out his own Twitter account at Yu-Gi-Oh! Deck Talk. All right, so that is it. We don't have the upcoming news for the rest uh, for November. We do have it for the rest of the month. Uh, These events are still going to go around for a little bit more time. They just unlocked Area 3 for the Clash at Crash Town. So dig into that if you haven't. We still have a new Legendary Duelist in the last week of October. That is Shark. So more gems, more new cards. That's all good stuff. New duel skills. That's always great. We'll dig into Shark next week. And late October, a new SR card called Playmaker in Mission Circuit. So that is it for the podcast. Thanks for listening. Uh, Listen and subscribe anywhere you get your podcast. Just search the Duel Assessment. You'll find it. All these notes are on the dualassessment.wordpress.com. Email me with anything at the dualassessment at gmail.com or you can find me on Twitter at dual underscore assessment. All right, that is it. Enjoy the new cards, enjoy the new events. 
I'll see you next time.